What is up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa, and I'm the director of marketing and meeting for Warrior Rising. This platform right now is where we talk to these incredible veterans and veteran spouses and family. They give voice to the fact that Warrior Rising is the premier place for veteran entrepreneurs and their families. So today we have a very special treat. We have Tess Partridge who competed in Iowa. She is the business owner of At Home Ads and she is here to tell us about her experience. So Tess, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So first off, can you just tell us about what is your journey as a, as a military spouse and how it's in, influenced your entrepreneurial journey? Oh man, that is a long winded story. <laughs> I, I guess the best way to summarize it is uh, prior to getting married and um, living that mill spouse life, I truly did not know what I was getting into. Uh, mm -hmm. I had pretty big professional dreams that I had to take and pivot. And I think the best way to summarize my life as a mill spouse coupled with my professional goals was taking the making the best of my situation and doing what I could with it so you know from bouncing from place to place city to city with limited resources I just looked around and grabbed at what I could and kind of built from there that's awesome so everyone everyone who couldn't go to Iowa let us in on your experience there what did you experience what kind of connections did you make? Because it seemed like a very, very interesting group of people that came together to compete, um, where it was very synergistic is the word that kept going around. So explain your experience with, in Iowa. So it was, Iowa was a first for me and mm -hmm. it was a really good experience. I would say the yeah. biggest takeaway was working and getting to know all the different people coming from all different sectors. Like yeah. it wasn't tech based, it wasn't uh product based. And that was the the biggest takeaway is these were all businesses that were very different, uh people from very different backgrounds. But that also gave you just a well rounded experience learning, you know, what people had gone through and their experience and what they could bring to the table. And that was the best part for me was just getting to know the other competitors per se and their backgrounds yeah. and their stories yeah and having everybody come up to the kiosks and ask all these questions because again like you said it wasn't like everyone was on the same in the same industry at all no very completely different mm -hmm. yeah so with uh having to go obviously to, to be a competitor any of these business showers you have to go through warrior academy what mm -hmm. what was how is that how has warrior academy helped shape your business has it expedited it what what benefits came from that so Warrior Academy, for me, as a second time business owner, I guess you could say, you know, it. I'm not, I don't know everything for sure, um, but it was a really good way to underscore the things that I'm doing right and the stuff that I could do better or the stuff that I wasn't doing at all that I needed to be working on. And uh, that was my big takeaway. So, and I love that I could go about it at my own pace. Uh, it wasn't something mm -hmm. I had to complete in a week or a month. I could just kind of chip away at it. Uh, as needed. Uh, but the Warrior Academy, it was just a really good refresher course in a lot of ways. But also, when it came to at home ads, and the differences from the other business that I own, it was a way for me to like refine a skill set that um, I'm entering a different space. And so just refine some of the skills in the space that I'm entering versus the space that I was in previously. Awesome. So explain to everyone what is at home ads? So how did this come about? And what is it? Yeah, so At Home Ads is a digital marketplace where we are connecting anyone who owns land. So from your front yard to acreage along a highway to awesome. an advertiser who might want to put a yard sign or a micro billboard on that land. Um, and so instead of a company like the one I own paying a mega corporation like Google or Facebook to do some digital ads, which there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, when it comes to advertising, hitting multiple sectors is always a really good way to do it. And so static displays are a really good way to advertise. And instead of paying this big corporation, you can pay your local community to put up your static displays. Uh, and I got the idea from the other business that I own, iStroll. We traditionally used yard signs. 
However, for mm -hmm. a small business owner, yard signs are pretty expensive and having to mm -hmm. buy 300 or so and put them around town is a lot of money only to lose them within months because the city comes through and throws them away. So it's more cost effective to pay, you know, buy 30 and put them in yep. the exact locations you want them to sit and then pay the local community to ensure that they're staying up for whatever duration of time you kind of arrange with them. Yeah, that's incredible. So what challenges did you face other than, you know, originally with them being taken down? What other challenges did you face when starting up at home ads? Um, so at home ads is, you know, the tech space is brand new to me. Uh, I love taking on challenges and like ruffling feathers, I guess you could say, Yeah, <laughs> uh, being a disruptor in a space. Uh, so, uh, and I, I'm doing all that. Um, but there's just a lot to learn when it comes you know, to tech, I'm not a builder. Um, so mm -hmm. finding someone to work with ha was the first challenge. Getting the product built was the second challenge. Uh, and then finding a CTO to take over the product was the third challenge. Oh, but yeah. luckily we have, you know, successfully conquered all those. My CTO is absolutely awesome. He's great at what he does. Uh, we're a good team and it's been fun to fun to work with him. Uh, you know, now that we're live, getting customers is always a challenge. Thankfully, we are, you know, doing it. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. But it's never easy. <laughs> None of it's yeah. ever easy, but I'm willing to step up and face any any hardships that we have and get through yeah. them. Yeah, I would say mental toughness is like a big one to be able to handle the challenge and to be able to show up on the good and the bad days. So mm -hmm. it, so it sounds like you've been able to to do that. And where where would you say your mental toughness has stemmed from? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> so I grew up, I played a lot of sports, uh, mm -hmm. very competitive by nature. Uh, I kind of have like two no bullshit parents, I guess you could yeah. say. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> who d didn't let a lot slide um and not that they were lacked empathy or anything like that they just they woke up and did the daily grind and i witnessed that firsthand uh they came from absolutely nothing and provided us with the best life that they could um but to watch them you know struggle their way through that and then raise two kids uh, that was probably the biggest life lesson that i have seen firsthand um, to just, you know, keep forging on, use the resources that you have. My mother-in-law yeah. always said something that was like, um, use it up, wear it out, make do or do without. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that's just something I keep in the back of my mind all the time. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, so being an entrepreneur times two, two businesses, what's your favorite part about being an entrepreneur? Oh, so I think once someone lives that entrepreneur life, uh, even for a short duration, it's really hard to go back to the traditional nine to five. Mm -hmm. um, the best part is truly making your own schedule and being accountable. Like all my failures are my failures. I have nobody yeah. to blame except for myself. And then successes, though, that's, uh, you know, that's the flip side of it. Uh, thankfully, with iStroll, my other business, I have a phenomenal set of women. Uh, we have a great team. Um, and you know, but the failures are still my failures. The wins though are kind of like the team's wins and it's fun to share those moments with, with everyone, my team that I've kind of built myself. And I would yeah. say that's, I don't know, once you live that life, it's really hard to go back and like work for the man per se. Yeah, I can, I can uh, definitely attest to that. That's very, it would be very hard to go back to exactly what I was just doing uh, almost a month ago now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know, you get it. Yeah, it's like a, a new transition. And everyone talks about that transition, right? Like even from, um, is your spouse still serving? Yeah, so he is serving. Yep. He's currently gone. Um, so definitely doing that like solo mom of three, running a business, yep. wearing lots of hats. But it's nothing I'm yeah. not used to at this point, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as like a military spouse and I mean, it's, it's that transition, but also just that, that lifestyle, it's, it's as if you're serving too, right? Because you're having to cover down and, and do the things and provide and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, for an aspiring military spouse who wants to start a business, what, what would the pieces of advice be for them? Highly encouraged. Uh, I am not, and there's nothing 
uh, I, nothing against the women who kind of like live and breathe that military spouse life. Yeah. I think the military needs them very much. So I try to be as involved as I can when it comes to FRG showing up for events, being a network on the military spouse side of the house. Um, but I think it's really important for male spouses who are constantly moving, constantly rebuilding networks to have something for themselves. And whether that's starting a business or yeah. identifying as, you know, like a crunchy mom who wants to cook really healthy organic meals. I just think it's important that military spouses who are constantly having to remake their entire lives to yeah. have something that they can always hold on to. And for me, that's been my businesses and my kids. Um, you know, like it's never the same community. It's never the same house, never the same schools or gyms. Like you are constantly having to reshape, sorry, my cat just jumped up here, reshape <laughs> um, uh, so many facets of who you are. So to have something that is always going to remain with you is very important, especially if you also are like hiding in the shadows of your husband's career because you can't necessarily have one that stands out. Uh, entrepreneurship is a way that that you can. Um, and if, even being a business owner isn't in someone's cards. I just encourage all male spouses to have something that is theirs. Um, yeah. And whatever that may be, just something that they can hold on to and take with them everywhere they go. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a amazing piece of advice to not lose yourself. Um, even when people become parents, I've noticed just in that space too, it's, you know, you feel like you, now you have to live for them and like kind of forget about yourself. And as mothers, I want to say we carry a heavier um, weight on our shoulders to kind of just take care of everything. It's just one of those things that's internal. Um, so I think it's very important. That's a, such a great piece of advice to have something that's yours, whether it's a hobby or something you can look forward to. So I really, I really like that piece of advice. Um, and going back to at home ads, like how, how easy, let's say that, you know, I run a fitness business, um, which <laughs> I do, how, how could this help me? And how easy is it to just to, if I'm looking at at home ads, I want to put some ads up for this thing I'm doing. Yeah. What is that process? How easy is it? It's pretty easy. So right now we are launched in one city in Tennessee, but let's pr pretend that at home ads was everywhere and there were yep. houses available in your local area. You would get on the app, uh, you would upload an image that you had pre created, maybe with like your logo, your location address, maybe your phone number. Uh, and then you would rent available yards in your area, and then we would ship them your signs for that duration of time. When your rental was up, you could even go get your signs, pick them up, and then reuse them in the future. Awesome. So yeah. what do you see in the, the ad space in um, in general, I would say, is pretty big. What are you seeing in that industry? What um, challenges or competition? What are you seeing in that space? So when it comes to competition, I don't know if we have any direct competitors because we're kind of creating this new market. However, I will say I've tried to work with a couple. It's been so crazy to me. I've, I've tried to work with a couple billboard companies, yep. uh, three to be exact. And I get on the phone, propose to them just kind of like the billboards that I want. And then upon further inquiry, the companies are like, wait a second. So you're doing what? And then the conversation tends to die out. And wow. In the Nashville area, I've kind of been blacklisted from billboards. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I would, I don't view them as competitors because what we're trying to do is provide small businesses and politicians who don't want to pay those costs the uh, the uh, option to do static displays, but just on a smaller scale, like truly a smaller scale um, yeah. and more at eye level. But apparently, uh, that is threatening to yep. the billboard industry, and so they have seemed unwilling to work with us. Uh, when it comes to the digital sector, I don't know if I would view them as competition. I think any business knows that when, hopefully they know that when you're advertising, it's best to advertise through multiple channels. Uh, and so I think if, you know, a small business were to get on the platform, they'd hopefully want to do static displays coupled with, you know, maybe some smaller digital digital ads the digital advertising side of the house so you probably know this like it's just becoming so saturated it's really expensive yep. so for me to advertise yep. with for i stroll i have to spend a thousand bucks a month easy 
for to make any type of dent. And so for like a local ice show owner, they could throw up a couple yard signs, spend 300 bucks and you're getting more views than you would on Google. So, um, I don't know. I'm hoping that it's, it gives small business owners truly just a more affordable way to get their name out there in a market that is really saturated right now. Absolutely. I would say that is very true when they start rolling out like, you know, Facebook ads and things like that. I was like, oh, only pay $5. But I'm like, you're just paying money to like not be seen, essentially. It's you have to be paying a significant amount to really make um, a dent. And some people don't have that when they're starting out. So it, no. I think advertising, even in your communities where people know and trust who that person is or that they're, a, they're supporting local, um, I think that's a great place to start until you do have the capital and then you can maybe go bigger. But I do find it interesting too that the billboards are seeing you as a threat. That was my first initial reaction when you said blacklisted. I was like, oh yeah, they're seeing this as a, oh crap, this yeah. is going to change. It's going to change the game. Mm -hmm. um, and you never know, there might be someone who bites on it eventually, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we'll I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> I'm trying to view it that way, although it would be, yeah. I don't view us as a threat because, no. you know, like if you, if it's small business, they're not going to spend a thousand bucks for a single month to put their name on a billboard. Um, they can't afford that, but they might spend 200 to put their name on a sign in the middle of a city for a month. So I don't necessarily view us as competition, but the fact that they do, I think yeah. puts us in a good spot. It's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's on the horizon for at-home ads? How do you see it evolving? So right now we are trying to really prove concept in the location that we have launched. We are definitely on the path to do that. Uh, within the next couple months, we would like to launch in another city. We kind of have a game plan in place. Uh, we have someone picked out in Las Vegas, Nevada, who is going to attempt to do there what I've done here. Um, and then from there, you know, we would choose another city, probably more on the East Coast. So we'd be central, slightly west, and then east. And then from there, just open little pockets and hopefully, that, okay. you know, takes it across the U.S. Awesome. And with your entrepreneurial journey, do you recommend any books or podcasting courses? Like what would you recommend to someone who just wants to get started in a way that they don't have to necessarily pay for anything? Maybe it's a book, though. Oof. Um, gosh, I can't think of the book that I read. Um. I can't think of the title off the top of my head, but I did read yep. a book about investing and uh, taking on funds, building a team. Uh, but the thing that I really dipped into was podcasts and yeah. news articles uh, that had anything relative to the industry that I was in. So how, the, how I built this podcast is a really good one. Uh, yeah. And they have really interesting segments on there, even from like the fitness realm to the tech space to mobile applications, uh, just testaments to people's stories from where they started. Uh, y Combinator for anyone in the tech industry is a really good resource. Even just filling out their application, even if you don't apply, is a really good idea. Could It just gives you direction on the things that you should be doing if you're opening a tech company. And yeah. then... Uh, I don't know, like I very, I follow closely any companies that I want to be or emulate. So yeah, um, the fitness side of the house, like Orange Theory, Burn Bootcamp, those are gyms that have blown up. Uh, and so just knowing their story, what they did to go to market, any pivots that they took and why, really good points of information on the at-home ad side, uh, Airbnb. DoorDash, Swimply, those like marketplace style tech companies, I could probably give you their their story from start to finish um, because it's just their huge learning mechanisms to know. If you want to be like a certain company out in the industry you're in, it's really good to know how those companies came to be, the failures and their successes and what all those entailed because it's they're all learning keys. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing information for anybody. So to kind of close it out, do you, do you have any other last pieces of advice you would give to someone just starting their entrepreneurial journey? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, start small. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, for me to get to this, the, a time in my life where I could open at-home ads and, like, take the funds to 
do it. Uh, my husband and I have worked long and hard to be in a financial spot where we could pay to get an app made yeah. cash. Uh, and, you know, that was from, I started I stroll at 1500 bucks, you know, and that yep. business gave us a nice supplementary income where we could save money every month and put that aside. It allowed us, along with my husband's income, to invest in some side and then slowly bump those up to be more lucrative and buy more expensive houses. Uh, that gave us more profit every month, um, you know. It, it it just doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's like, yeah. if you want to start a restaurant and you don't have the funds to do it, maybe start a lemonade stand. <laughs> that's that's yeah. not the best metaphor, but, um, Makes sense. you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. You have to start usually very small and save. And if you can't do that, then you need to start asking people for money, investors, stuff like that. And that's yeah. not always super fun. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So how can people get involved with at-home ads where, uh, whether they're the property owner or the advertiser, how can they find um, you? Uh, so www.athomeads.com. Uh, we have a landing page with a bunch of information on it. And from there, you can download the apps on uh, Google Play or the Apple Store. Or you can just go into Google Play or the Apple Store and download them directly there. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you, Tess. Your story is incredible. We can't wait to see what happens next. And I know that there's going to be so much more. You're going to be changing the game and creating this market space. That is absolutely incredible, especially for Thanks small Alyssa. business owners. Yeah. So thank you for being here and sharing your story with us. Thanks. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And for everyone listening, this has been Warrior Voices with Warrior Rising, and we'll see you next time.